Well, um, for today's Voice in the Wilderness segment, we're going to do something a little bit different. I, I really want to fit in um, a particular sermon from a particular guy I've been trying to get to for a while. But um, it's not going to happen because I don't want to go much more over an hour, uh, go any more over an hour than I have to, trying to stick to 30 minutes a day and then an hour-long program on Friday. Uh, we're going to talk about a different voice in the wilderness Um, that voice in the wilderness, his name is Seth Dunn, and he is a member of First Baptist Church of Woodstock, Georgia. Johnny Hunt is his pastor. Johnny Hunt, this Sunday, uh, is going to have preached for him Irgen Canner. And if you don't know who who Irgen Canner is, uh, he is, without trying to be mean or over the top, Uh, He is probably the most notorious uh, scoundrel and unrepentant liar that evangelicalism has seen in a long, long time. Uh, He has capitalized on the tragedy of 9-11 to uh, exaggerate his Muslim credentials uh, and to lie about his past as a jihadi-trained terrorist who was uh, born in the Middle East, which he was not, uh, who grew up in the Middle East, which he did not, uh, who spoke Arabic, which he has not, who debated Muslims uh, in apologetics, which he has not, um, and and then, of course, was raised as an radical Islamic uh, uh, individual trained in terrorism to conduct Uh, terrorism in the United States, none of which was true. Uh, He has never publicly acknowledged any of these sins, but because of the political situation in the SBC, um, no one uh, that has been prominent has called him to repentance. Uh, The national news has really yet to pick up on this. I mean, we've seen it online, but we haven't seen any big exposés from, you know, places like 60 Minutes. I think we will one day. I, th- I absolutely uh, think we're going to see the national, national press, you know, like Fox News or MSNBC, uh, invade little bitty Bruton Parker College with their cameras and reporters. Uh, all they need is a slow news day, and they're there. Um, that's all it's going to take. We, as Southern Baptists, have let it slide. Um, there have been... Uh, a multitude of blogs by individual local pastors, but our leaders have been silent, absolutely silent. Now, uh, he, uh, Canner, uh, came well connected. Uh, as soon as 9-11 happened, Paige Patterson glommed onto him and supported him, just like he did uh, uh, convicted uh, sexual offender Daryl Gilliard. Um, And he has not publicly called him to repentance. Very similar, again, to convicted uh, sexual criminal Daryl Gilliard. Um, They promote these guys when they fall. They don't put their neck out. You know, uh, Tom Buck uh, gives the analogy of someone dumping trash on your lawn and not coming back to pick it up. Uh, Irgen, uh, because of his superstar notoriety, uh, making all of these claims about not only his debate and apologetic credentials, but also uh, his uh, past as a radical Islamic extremist, Uh, also receiving notoriety and fame and career advancement. Uh, His brother, Amir Kanner, also in the state of Georgia, is president of Truett McConnell. Um, Kanner uh, was disgraced and uh, uh, demoted at Liberty University, then his contract, as I understand it, non-renewed. Um, and even when they demoted him simply to profess professor, his workload was diminished greatly. It was one of those, we don't want to fire you, but you need to leave type situations. He went down to Arlington uh, Baptist College in Texas, now back into a Southern Baptist school because Arlington was not. Um, it was an independent school, whatever. Uh, now he's at Bruton Parker College. Uh, his uh, buddy, Peter Lumpkins, uh, is serving as Baghdad Bob, uh, his communications spokesman. Um, uh, we see uh, you know, individuals on the board like Bucky Kennedy uh, ardently defend him. When they hired him, they said, we're, we're hiring him because he is such a warrior. He's withstood such, quote-unquote, pagan attacks. 
Um, in other words, they hired him because of his lack of repentance. He continues to this day to say uh, things like, I have nothing to repent for. I can't repent for, uh, for videos that were edited, when, of course, they were not edited. Um, at least the great majority of them are not edited. He has sued and lost. Uh, he has sued uh, a Southern Baptist pastor, the son of a, another son of a Southern Baptist pastor. Um, sued Christians, fellow Christians, for posting unedited videos of his lies because he's trying to cover that up. Well, here comes Johnny Hunt, and it is very much the good old boy golf course, uh, you know, um, discipleship type thing where I'm going to take you under my wing and we're going to be pals. I'm going to promote you. And if you ever fall, I'm never going to, to publicly call you to repent because that's simply not done. Now we want a revival in the SBC. At least that's what I I've heard. That's the rumor. Uh, we want a revival in the SBC and you know, at, at this year's pastor's conference prior to the uh, annual meeting in Baltimore, the theme was, show us your glory. We want to see God move. That's what we want. Um, and yet, we will not call ourselves to repentance. It's no wonder that God has not blessed us in our call of repentance to the world. And so Johnny Hunt, very uh, powerful man in the Georgia Baptist Convention, uh, one of the most famous p- uh, preachers, pastors in the Southern Baptist Convention as a whole, a man who I think can preach really well, uh, is having his uh, friend, Irgen Canner, now speak, preach from his church at First Baptist Church, Woodstock. Now, why this is important is because it's really the first um, rehabilitation attempt of Irgen Canner. He's been an untouchable, but in emails that have been released, we, we see, and some of them you can see at the pulpit in pen.org, um, uh, Hunt is claiming that Canner has repented and he's ready to be rehabilitated when in fact he, he's even now still denying that he has sinned. He's denying that he's, he's done anything wrong. It's one big misunderstanding. Um, and guys that are friends with Canner, that are serving with Canner in various capacities, like uh, uh, Timothy uh, Guthrie, who, who give these ludicrous excuses for Cantor. Um, Cantor knows they're wrong. He knows they're lies, but yet he's hiding these things. Um, why would a gospel preacher lend his pulpit to an unregenerate man? When I say unregenerate, understand faith is demonstrated by repentance. You have a lifestyle of lying. You're not repentant for it. He's absolutely not repentant for it. And this is my opinion anyway. Um, why would we consider him even saved, Johnny Hunt? Um, I, you know, to me, to guard your pulpit, that's one of the jobs of, of a pastor. It, how, how is the pulpit at First Baptist Church of Woodstock, Georgia, so devalued, disrespected, and, and abused? I, I don't know. Well, we're going to be talking to a voice in the wilderness who is a member of that church, who has some things to say about it. I want Johnny Hunt, I want Jim Law, I want the staff at First Baptist Church Woodstock to listen to their own church member and his concerns, because they don't seem to be listening to his emails or phone calls. Maybe they'll listen if he's on the pulpit and pen program. Maybe he'll listen if it's on a program that that people listen to outside the state of Georgia. I mean, obviously, they don't seem to care too much what their own church members think. Maybe if we give Seth Dunn a megaphone, they'll start to care. What we want is repentance, to stop hiding. And as this interview will show you, uh, what we want is the average apathetic member of that church to wake up. And not only call Irgen Canner to repentance, but call their pastor, Johnny Hunt, to repentance. Uh, Forgive the clarity uh, of of this or lack thereof. Um, This all went down really fast. I couldn't get to the studio. I just called Seth on my cell phone, pressed record, and uh, did it that way. So we'll be back with you afterwards for a daily downgrade segment. 
All right. Well, calling into the Pulpit and Pin program, we have Seth Dunn. How are you, Seth? I'm doing well, J.D. Thanks for having me. Let me let me establish this uh, right off the bat. Uh, are you are you some crazy person out out in the woods in Georgia, or are are you a rational human being, Seth? Or, I mean, a lot of people that complain or that have concerns about Jurgen Cantor were blown off as extremists or radical. T- tell me just a little bit about yourself, so the audience can familiarize themselves with you. Well, J.D., I got saved when I was six uh, in Sunday school. My my Sunday school teacher shared the gospel with me. I have been attending Southern Baptist churches my whole life. Uh, I was baptized in a Southern Baptist church. Um, I'm a student at a Southern Baptist seminary. Um, some people wouldn't think this makes me rational, but I am a Southern Baptist fundamentalist who believes in the fundamentals of faith, that the Bible is inerrant, you know, virgin birth. Uh, bodily resurrection of Jesus. Uh, I'm just a conservative Christian. Uh, I majored in Christian apologetics, uh, working on my Master's of Divinity right now. Um, I think I, I, I'm a very rational person who's, who's studied theology and continues to study theology. Um, I'm not a professional theologian or preacher in any way. I'm a certified public accountant. Uh, accounting is, is my business. I have a regular 9-to-5 accounting job. And I'm just a normal church member who's concerned ab- about not only this canter situation, but it seems to be what a, a general lack of accountability at the church at which uh, I'm a member. Well, let me let me ask a question right off the bat because every time someone has some criticism towards Jurgen Canter, uh, we're accused of being Calvinists or hyper Calvinists. I have no idea where where do you fall in that? Are you uh, are you on that side of things? What, how does Calvinism play into this? And this will be my last question on that topic. I just want to go ahead and get it out of the way before we talk about some of the meat of the issue. Oh, well, I'm afraid uh, Calvinists would only find me batting 600, J.D., because I'm only with them on three out of the five points. Uh, I believe in, in total depravity, and I believe in unconditional election, and I believe in the perseverance of the saints. So I believe that nobody can lose their salvation. And I believe that all men are sinful from birth, just like Paul says in Romans, and we need the Holy Spirit to be able to come to God and repent of our sins. And that, I think that makes me uh, a very orthodox Baptist who can confess under our Baptist uh, Faith and Message 2000, just like Albert Moeller and just like Chuck Kelly and just like Paige Patterson. You know, That's a, a very good orthodox confession, and I'm a part of that. I am not a part of the quote-unquote Calvinist pagan conspiracy. Uh, so I mean, uh, you, you would call yourself a three-point Calvinist. So that, you're pretty much just the typical, typical Southern Baptist. Because that's that that's where most of them would lie, right? You're not uh, you're not a rabid Calvinist. You're not you're not even close. Am I hearing you right? That that's true. Um, I'm not even close. But I I have respect for my Calvinist brothers. I think my Calvinist brothers that I've met in seminary are intelligent people. I don't think they're heretics in any way and all the ones i know love to share the gospel and love jesus i don't understand why this needs to separate us other than somebody who's a power broker out there maybe somewhere my theory wants to have a fight because we can't fight the liberals anymore so we're going to fight somebody so we can get power and we can get power and uh political clout you know make a well that's my opinion you caught my attention because I saw in social media, and, and I knew that you were upset over Johnny Hunt uh, lending his credibility to Jurgen Kanner, and not only lending his credibility, but lending his pulpit to a man that has uh, been unrepentant uh, concerning really the career of lives that he has told, uh, denying even that he has anything to repent for. Um, first of all, how did you first find out about Jurgen Kanner? Uh, got ready to preach at Woodstock, and, and why does it concern you so much? Uh, the first I found out about Ergen Cantor preaching at Woodstock, I saw uh, another member of First Baptist Woodstock posted on Twitter, and and I was shocked. And this this was, you know, after Johnny Hunt had already talked about, oh, you know, Ergen's okay, you know, Ergen's fine. You know, this was after that. I, I think this was after... Um, I can't remember exactly, but I think this is after First Bed or 
uh, FBC Jack's watchdog, Tom Rich's blog came out where where Johnny says via email, oh, uh, Ergen Kenner's repented before his place of service. But, uh, he's okay, and I've commended him to the board of Bruton Parker. But I, I was still shocked that he would invite him to preach, and I was outraged. Now, as I understand it, you're a member of First Baptist Church Woodstock? Yes, I am a member of First Baptist Church of Woodstock, but honestly, I, forthrightly, I haven't haven't been there in months. I've, I haven't missed a Sunday at church, except for maybe a couple that go visit relatives. I go to a local church here in Cartersville that is the Southern Baptist Church, but it does not give any money to the Georgia Baptist Convention because, as I've said on my on my blog, I've written two very long pieces uh, speaking as an accountant who's concerned with stewardship. I don't think one can be a good steward of money and support the Georgia Baptist Convention. So even though Woodstock still has my letter for right now, I'm attending church somewhere else, uh, and I have been ever since Johnny Hunt, Jim Law, and the leadership at First Baptist Woodstock refused to accommodate uh, the giving of people who objected to the Georgia Baptist Convention because of Ergen Tanner's involvement. Well, you're talking, uh, you know, to J.D. Hall on the Pulpit Intent Program, and the first question that's going to be asked of you is, have you shared these concerns that you're now publicly sharing, not that this is the first time, have you shared these personally with Johnny before you've gone to the airwaves to discuss it? What's been your extent of involvement with your local leadership? I've shared them with Johnny Hunt. I've shared them with Jim Law. I've shared them with members of two Sunday school classes at First Baptist Woodstock because I attend two Sunday schools, one regular run-of-the-mill Sunday school class and one uh, apologetics Sunday school class. It's a specialty class there. And I have shared my concerns with both both of those classes and with leadership at Woodstock. And, and what has the response been? The leadership supports uh, Ergen Canner. The leadership supports him at Bruton Parker. Period. Sorry. You know there was a there was an email that I put on my blog that it leaked out that uh, it was from Jim Law, uh, in which uh, Jim says that uh, if if my memory serves, Johnny feels as though Tanner has uh, become repentant, like he's he's repentant and he's about ready uh, to be restored. Um, my question to you, Seth, is did you know, to your knowledge, has Canner done anything that would demonstrate repentance to any reasonable person? Um, no, J.D., he hasn't. Uh, the word is, as as is shown in the emails on your blog and is shown in the emails uh, at Tom Rich's blog, is that Ergen Canner repented at liberty, quote-unquote, before his place of service. But it seems like after that, He's posted that he was, quote, unquote, exonerated by three schools on Twitter, and he sued Jason uh, Smathers and Jonathan Autry. So that doesn't sound like a publicly repentant man to me. And as we all know who are familiar with this situation, he wrote a book with Mac Brunson, and in this book he says public sin calls for public repentance. Well, whether that's not a not right or or wrong, he hasn't followed his own advice, and he hasn't publicly repented at all. Well, and he's claimed that the videos and audios, uh, keep in mind, audience, are just a vast number of these lies told on audio and, and some in video. He claims that they have been manufactured by Calvinists or by Muslims. Um, just just horrendous lies and lies upon lies. As a matter of fact, Seth, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, he's even go, gone so far to say on Twitter, quote, I have nothing to repent for. Yeah, yes, I, I, I've seen, he, he's seen, I will not repent of edited videos. Well, to be fair to him, Muhammad Khan has edited some videos and put some uh, kind of over-the-top uh, commentary in there, but that's Muhammad Khan. I don't think James White has edited those videos. I've seen the uh, unedited Marine Corps videos, not, that, that's not an edited video. His, his sermon at uh, First Baptist Jacksonville and his sermon to the Ohio Free Will Baptist is not edited. Um, Turretin fans' blogs, which list lie after lie after lie after lie and claim of Bergen Canner, is not from edited video. So it seems like he's doing some selective truth-telling to me. He's saying, oh, it's just this one edited video of Muhammad Khan. No, we're talking about all the other ones, Ergen. So now Ergen has been invited to preach – 
at uh, your church, your pastor has invited him to preach from from the pulpit uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, let me ask you a question, and, and I know that you're not psychic. You can't read minds, neither can I. Why on earth would Johnny Hunt allow this man, who's unrepentant, um, I have no reason to believe someone is saved. I'm not, I'm not asking for your opinion on the subject. It's like when I when I interviewed Dr. Wyatt. Let me let me give you my opinion. I, I have no reason to believe uh, that a man who is unrepentant about a lifestyle of lies is a believer, and that's because my theology tells me that faith is demonstrated by repentance and demonstrated by a lifestyle of repentance. Why would why would that your pastor uh, Pastor Hunt? who I think is a man that that all of us, uh, at least to some degree, respect. Uh, Let me say, uh, the man can preach. He has an excellent excellent gift and exhortation. Uh, Obviously, you have an affinity for the man, or else you wouldn't have been sitting under his his, uh, uh, teaching for so long. Why would he allow this man and and invite him to come preach at the church? Uh, Well, J.D., if, if you look up the Gatlinburg Winter Extreme Conferences, uh, that Ergen Canner ha- has preached out in the past before he got in trouble. Johnny Hunt preached at those too. Um, Ergen Canner was the president or the president or dean of the Liberty Seminary. I think dean of the Liberty Seminary when Johnny Hunt was on the board there. Uh, Johnny Hunt was friends with Jerry Falwell, very influenced by Jerry Falwell. We all know Jerry Falwell uh, was very fond of Ergen Canner. I think these men are friends. And I think Johnny is just trying to see his friend who got in trouble uh, get back in the right, uh, get back uh, in the in a good career place after seeing how far he's fallen. I think, in my opinion, Johnny wants to see his friend restored and maybe either intentionally or unintentionally looking the, the other way on, on Kaner's actions. Johnny Hunt works 60 hours a week. When you work 60 hours a week pastoring, if you want to call pastoring a church that large, because you really, you know, you can't really take care of one individual sheep. There's no, there's no shepherd with 6,000 sheep who doesn't lose some. That's beside the point. But he's busy. He's going all around the country teaching leadership, speaking here, that, and the other. He doesn't have the kind of time that other people have to look up all these lies Irvin Kanter has told. It's taken me hours of my personal time away from my family, away from my studies, to to read these blogs, to watch these videos, and to listen to these these audios of his sermons that are extremely hard to find. Um, I don't think Johnny Hunt's done it. So I think Johnny Hunt's not done his own homework on Erton Kaner. So you mix that up with, with how graceful Johnny is trying to be, mix that up with, you know, uh, the flesh, somebody trying to look up with their friend. I mean, it could be a mixture of any three of those things. Well, I'm yeah, and I'm disappointed to find out, um, that rather substantiated, that, that Hunt uh, endorsed Canner, so to speak, uh, to the uh, uh, to the board at Burton Parker College. Um, he seemed to, uh, you know, reports denied it at first, and then it, it seems especially, uh, you know, in the email to Jim Law, this is exactly what transpired, but... Um, beside the point, let me let me ask you, Seth. To your knowledge, are you the only member of Johnny Hunt's church there at FBC Woodstock that's upset about this? No, there's more than there's more than me upset. I know of at least one other person, and he would get mad at me if I mentioned his name. And I think you know who he is. And actually, JD, this individual is the one who told me about who Irvin Kaner was in the first place. And he is very upset. But he is trying to. You know, work on this quietly from the inside. Um, I don't think that's the way to go. I'm taking a public stand. I'm putting my, what I think is a good name, beside my own words, and I'll stand for that on the last day, judged for my words, and I think I'll be judged well for that. And I, I just wish other people at Woodstock and other people in Georgia Baptist Convention would not be afraid or not be intimidated about you know, we we saw the Matthew LaHue situation. I want people to be able to stand up and say, "This is this is what the Bible says, and I believe the Bible, and this is wrong, and I'm going to stand up for it." And if my preachers and my pastors and my elders and my deacons don't believe what the Bible says, then they're wrong, and they don't deserve to be in those positions. 
Yeah, I, I do know who you're talking about. I'm just going to leave him out of it because, number one, such a, a great guy. But let me say this. It is discouraging to the rest of us trying to speak truth when someone who has a, a megaphone, sort of, uh, so to speak, that they can really get the word out there through one form of media or another, choose not to do that because it leaves the rest of us, uh, frankly, with our neck out there to get whacked at. Um, so he's coming this Sunday, and, and what are you what are you planning on doing, Seth? Well, I, I've organized a group on Facebook. If you want to call it organized, it's called Protest Tanger at FBCW. Uh, it's been woefully unsuccessful. I mean, I've got 40 likes, I think, and 20 of them have come from tonight. Uh, I wanted people to show up in mass, maybe dress the same, maybe hold up some signs at the Sonic across the street, or maybe pass out some flyers. Um, at the little bus stops at Woodstock, uh, but I just haven't been able to get anything going. And I'm hoping somebody from around Georgia will hear this and, and show up because it doesn't take people holding up signs, you know, cause, or, or screaming in a megaphone. It just takes regular people showing up, on, you know, maybe sitting on the bus on the trolley because we have a big parking lot at Woodstock and saying, hey, do you know about this caner guy? Hey, let me tell you what I know about it. Look up, Google, Google. Just word of mouth, the way people did it in the first century with the gospel. Word of mouth, word of mouth. If enough people will show up and pull somebody over the side and say, hey, do you know about this guy? Maybe that will get one member of that church who thinks Johnny Hunt is the infallible pope, and I, I think those people are out there. Maybe they'll get one member of that church to take their red pill and say, hey, wait a minute. Something's wrong here, and I need to stand up against it and do the right thing because that's what Jesus would do, that's what Paul would do, and that's what Peter would do. Listen, you're you're from Georgia. Let me let me ask you. I'm, I'm, I'm from, from outside, Tennessee, but I've lived in Georgia for ten years. Okay, point taken. I, I I'm in Montana, and I'm I'm looking into Georgia. I don't have ten years of experience there like you do, and it seems to me to be along with Louisiana one of the most spiritually corrupt places that there is. Whether it's Tripp McConnell or Bruton Parker or now Johnny Hunt that kind of leads the state. I mean, he's not the executive director of the GBC or anything like that, but he's a man of just extreme clout and influence. And i, I got to ask the question. Maybe maybe you don't have the answer. What is up with the Georgia Baptist Convention? It just seems to be corrupt from top to bottom. Is it? Am I looking at it wrong, or is it just that bad? It's perplexing, J.D. I mean, here in, in Bartow County, we're very blessed to have uh, great, a great local mission association and the churches cooperate and they do a lot of good in the community, but statewide looking, I mean, in my, I think in my County alone, we have 45 churches and, and Georgia has more counties than any state except Texas. And you can, they probably all have 45 Baptist churches with so many uh, churches who believe the right thing. You'd think we'd be living in, in the new Jerusalem with, with so much goodness. But well, we're and, and, and yeah, Seth, if, you, if you listen to what Gerald Harris writes, in the Georgia Index, it would seem as though you are living in the New Jerusalem. I mean, it, 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 Baptist papers, literally, I mean, they pump sunshine. Will there be any truth? There could be a, a, a lynch mob. Not That's what we want. But there could be a, there could be a riot outside of First Baptist Church Woodstock Sunday uh, on account <laughs> of this issue. Do you think it would make the Georgia Index? Absolutely <laughs> not. It, it wouldn't it. happen. It wouldn't happen. So I, I think, let me tell you something that opened my eyes. I actually have a free subscription to the Georgia Index bought for every member of uh, uh, First Baptist Woodstock. So thank you, Woodstock, for my free subscription. Gerald Harris preached recently at a conference called the Restore Conference with Don Hathaway. Don Hathaway is the president of the Georgia Baptist Convention. I just so happened to have been a member of Tabernacle Baptist Church where I was baptized for uh, years before I went to First Baptist Woodstock. I'm sad under Don Hathaway's preaching. Like Johnny, Don Hathaway is a fine biblical preacher uh, who's who's right on many points of doctrine, and uh, he's great to listen to. He's a nice man. You know, I see him around town. He's friendly with me. Uh, he, he's a very nice man. And he's a good guy, but he always preaches revival, revival, revival. But I never know what we're supposed to have revival from, and I never know what we're supposed to repent from, except his friends like Gerald Harris and, and uh, don't seem to want to report on any of that stuff. So where's the revival coming from? Nobody wants to talk about the corruption, it seems to me. What 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 is it that you want? So let's say, uh, let me play the uh, the devil's advocate here. I'm going to say, it just seems like you're a malcontent, Seth. What What do you want? You want you want Hunt's blood? What What do you want out of this? No, I just want regular, everyday church people 
to stop being so apathetic. And you know what, J.D., you're a pastor. You've been involved in church planning. You know, I've learned this in seminary. I know that most everyday people are just apathetic. They're trying to live their lives. And, you know, you've seen, we've seen Barna surveys about this, about the small percentage of people who share their faith, the small percentage of people who tithe, and the mindset that people think that they've hired their pastor to do evangelism. And my job is to invite people to church so my pastor can save them and don't want to do things themselves. Well, with with that complete little, total lack of accountability, and to, there, it's just there's just going to be corruption running wild because nobody's getting held their feet to the fire, and and regular congregation members don't do anything. I want the remnant, the remnant JD that that Don Hadaway likes to preach about. I want the remnant to stand up and say, Hey, wait a minute, maybe we have millions of quote unquote church members in Georgia, but maybe these people aren't really a part of the quote unquote remnant. I want somebody on fire with the gospel standing out and evangelizing people and and showing the world what true church accountability looks like. I want just some church discipline. I just want to make people aware. Uh, open, let them open their eyes up and see who, who has ear to, ears to hear and eyes to see. I don't want anybody in trouble. I don't want anybody's blood. That's not holy. That's not spirit-led. I, I, I just want people to to wake up and look around and try and make our world a better place and the church a better place. I, I think the issue for me is, uh, Seth, how are we as Christians, how now is Johnny Hunt and your church, First Baptist Church of Woodstock, how are they to look at the world and call them to repentance, uh, repentance as a demonstration, as, as a verification of saving faith in Jesus Christ, when the man now preaching to them this Sunday is such a notorious scoundrel in, in need uh, of repentance as much as, if not more so, than the typical lost person in the world, someone who has blasphemed the name of Jesus behind the pulpit by telling lies about himself, even indeed his own conversion story, if we can't call ourselves to repentance, then we have no business calling the world to repentance. Does that make sense to you? It makes sense to me, and I think you're right. And I think what we lose sight of sometimes is just because somebody has Baptist church outside the, on their marquee doesn't mean that they, they're going to do what the Bible says. You know, that, that's what the church, what you're talking about, that's what the church should be in the quote-unquote business of doing. But you know, J.D., sometimes, some people, the church might be in the business of getting people to show up and pay tithes, and they're going to give them a market-driven sermon. Around here, we have very conservative Republican people, so we can get up, and you, you need to vote for Romney because abortion's bad and gays are going to get us. Clap, 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 clap. Gun control, we're going to have our guns. Clap, 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 clap. You know, let's sell it, and let's keep the youth coming. I happen to know for a fact, J.D., that they intentionally, at first by this Woodstock, they intentionally try to, to entice youth to come so that the parents, that the parents, J.D., will come to the church and not leave. And, and here's what's really sad to me. It's uh, uh, somebody who was on staff said this to me. If the youth go to Johnson Ferry, the the parents will go with them. Now, why are we competing against Johnson Ferry? That's Bryant's Rights Church. That's the same denomination. Why are we competing against them for people? Because well, we got to pay the light bill, I guess. I mean, I'm let not me, let me ask you, Seth, the what are the chances of you being able to get a moment with Cantor to say? I think you should repent. I mean, biblically, that's what that's what you should do. I mean, you, if, if given the opportunity, you think that opportunity is going to present itself this week? He's down at the front. He gives an invitation. Uh, let me warn you. I, I highly suspect, especially after this program airs, um, which will be Friday, uh, I, I highly expect you to be ushered off. Uh, as you enter in the doors of that church. So I want you to be on guard for that. Well, they can usher me out. And then First Baptist of Woodstock can say we ushered Seth Dunn out the door when he came to call the Charlottes into repentance. He came to educate a church. That's have you, sought, have you sought wise counsel on this? Have, have you, I mean, have you prayed about this? Have you sought advice on this? J.D., I, I've prayed for the Holy Spirit's leading about what to do and what to say. Um, when the Caner thing first came about him coming to, to Bruton Parker, um, I sought the counsel of the pastors at my own church. You saw what happened with that. But I talked to other pastors 
uh, I've spoken to prof uh, at least one professor at at my school about this. Um, I, I've sought it out the, the advice, you know, 12 ways from Sunday. Have, last question. Have you shared concerns with the GBC, not just Woodstock? Yes, I have shared concerns with GBC leadership. And I know I said that'd be the last question. And what was the response? Well, you know, not everybody's going to think like me. You know, we got to let people be people, basically. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, we have to look at the outcomes of uh, Canner's lawsuits against Jonathan Autry and Jason Smathers and say, uh, not even in a tongue-in-cheek way, thank God that there are courts on this earth that will make decisions when churches don't. They're, they're yeah. able to make a judgment, and that's what's needed. Well, Seth, thank you so much for calling into the uh, Pulpit and Pin program. Uh, blessings. Don't do anything that's going to get yourself uh, hurt. I know you wouldn't, um, but it, it is sad that speaking truth makes us ask these questions and have these concerns. Uh, so, uh, man, uh, our prayers are with you, and uh, Godspeed for this Sunday. Thank you for having me, J.D. Enjoy the rest of your night. Take care. Bye.